Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. This is episode 8 of my Citadel building series. This week I finally had time to sit down and build my Separatist shuttle that I designed a few weeks back. But before we get into that, I just want to give a huge special thanks to our channel members, Daniel Ross Lego and Rich Boy J. If you guys want behind the scenes photos, early access to, or exclusive videos, then make sure to check out the channel memberships or my Patreon. Links will be down below in the description. Once again, I am incredibly thankful for Light My Bricks and their sponsorship of the series. They've sent me over a bunch of products in their DIY range, which is what I'm using to light up this mock. Don't forget to like the video, and if you're new, consider subscribing so that you're always notified when the next video comes out. With all that being said, let's get right into it. Starting off today's video with a time lapse, I got in all the parts I needed for the shuttle, so I sat down and built it. I made a full set of PDF instructions for the mock, so if you want to build it for yourself, I have them up on my Rebrickable page in the shop tab of my Patreon. The building process with instructions is much easier than trying to look at the model in studio and trying to figure out where the parts go, which is what I had to do for this go around. Everything transferred over well from render to real bricks, and the only thing that I found was that the back legs tend to buckle under the weight if it gets bumped, which can be remedied by placing some transparent bricks on the underside. Overall, I'm very pleased with this design. I based the scale of the shuttle around the windscreen piece from the Pagani Utopia, which has a perfect print for this, and the scale ended up working out really well for a number of reasons, one of them being the flags that I used for the spine of the ship. It's significantly smaller than minifigure scale, but looks good when placed next to them. I went for a smaller size so that it wouldn't take up as much real estate on the back of the mock, and I'm definitely glad I did. Okay, moving into a handling segment of the video, here you can see kind of how strong this thing actually is. I can tip it upside down, shake it back and forth, and obviously nothing is falling off. Nothing is really getting affected at all. The only thing on this model that I noticed was the back legs. Just because of the way that they're attached, these ratchet joints tend to kind of bend up under the weight if the table gets bumped or you press down on the shuttle or anything. So I just threw in these transparent bricks here, which isn't the end of the world. It doesn't bother me too much. Obviously, I would have preferred to not have to rely on something like this to keep the model steady, but honestly, it doesn't take away that much from the overall look. And because it's clear, obviously you're not really going to see it under most circumstances. So as far as I'm concerned, if this is the biggest issue going from a studio file into real bricks, then I'm pretty satisfied. But as far as all of the angles and the shaping and everything go, very happy with this. Looking down at the model, you can see that all of the underside is nicely finished off with those flag pieces, which I'm really happy about. Even the underneath of the ship has some reversed studs here and then a bunch of inverted tiles and then even going all the way to the back of the ship everything is all tiled off nicely. So definitely something that I try to strive for when I build mocks is to keep the underside looking just as good. But that is the basic looks of the model and now I want to get into some of the more interesting parts like the interior. So for the interior very small. As you guys could see when I was doing the time lapse for the build, everything in here is completely solid just because of the way that these side panels get attached and then everything going into the core of the ship, which is also why it's so strong. But what that meant is there was unfortunately not really any space for an interior, but I was able to make enough room in the cockpit to fit two pilot droids. So if you just pop off this, and then take off the windscreen. In there you can see there are two pilot battle droids. As you can see, everything is in there. You've got the head, both arms, and the legs. So the full figures fit. They attach into some studs here at the base. And I do have behind them, 
I pull them out. Inside is pretty ugly, but I did use some inverted tiles here to kind of try and clean it up as much as I could. And honestly, it's really as good as I could ask for with the size that I went for. And then just going to put these guys back in. Basically, you just gotta fold them up like this. And then you just kind of hold them by the feet, line up their right or left if he's sitting in this one. But with the stud right there, and then you just kind of push him back like so. So he's kind of leaning back in there, but he does fit. And then you take the other one. Putting the second one in is a little bit more challenging than the first, just because you have to work around his brother. But you just kind of snap it in like so. Maybe tilt him back a little bit. And you got both of them sitting in there. And then you just take the windscreen, snap that on, and then take the top section and press down. Once this is attached, this is really strong. Nothing is coming off. But when it's separated, it can be a little bit fragile. So that's something to watch for. But I mean, comparing this to the actual shuttle, you can definitely see the resemblance. And I'm really happy about that. So this is my cargo shuttle. And as I mentioned before, it is definitely under minifigure scale, but when you put it next to minifigures, it doesn't look too out of place. It's definitely big enough to be somewhat believable, and I think for the scale that I was going for with the mock, it definitely hits the mark. Alright, next I wanted to highlight some of the figures I'm going to be using in the mock. Most of these were sent over to me by my good friend Trey, or bricks to you Without him, this mock probably wouldn't have been possible. Okay, starting off with the Jedi, most of these guys are just official figures with some swapped out accessories, although I'm hoping that Bagels Season 3 Anakin and Obi-Wan will ship out in time for the finale, but it's unclear how likely that is. First up is Evan Peel. This guy is straight from Sicy Tin Starfighter. I made no changes to him. Unfortunately, there isn't much you can do in the way of upgrading him, but I think the print holds up fairly well. The obvious downside here is that Clone Wars style face. Next up we got Obi-Wan. I made him with the body from the Bark Speeder with Sycar and a realistic style head, and I think it looks pretty good. Next is Anakin. I switched out the legs for some nicely printed dual molded ones. The body is his Clone Wars Season 3 version, and the head is one of the very few from Revenge of the Sith that doesn't have Sith eyes or his headset. Moving into custom land, this is Paggle's Season 3 Ahsoka, a beautifully printed and extremely valuable figure. It has 360 leg printing, 180 torso printing, printed arms and hands, a custom face with the continued beads on the back, and a custom head tail piece that is fully printed all the way around with her Padawan beads. Man, this figure is just amazing. Okay, this one isn't fully there yet, I'm still waiting on a Jonak Toys order for the correct torso, but this is my realistic, purist version of Captain Tarkin. I used the head from the Dark Tan Imperial Officer for his weirdly pronounced cheekbones and characteristic scowl. The hair features the receding hairline and brown color from his younger years. Alright, clones time. These are all AV figures bodies with varying helmets, so I'll try my best to get them all right. Starting off with the 212th, we've got Commander Cody in his 360 printed glory. He's using a CAC helmet and visor, probably my least favorite of the helmets to be honest, it's just so big in the front. The visor does do a good job to make up for it though, the printing and mold just work really well. Next is Longshot, or the 212th Grunt. Helmet here is from Jay's Little Things, and it's a replica of LEGO's 2013 style phase one. I've got three of these guys and they all have backpacks like we see in the show and I just love how they look. Okay, now to the boys in blue. First up is Rex, again using a Jay's Little Thing helmet, and this just looks phenomenal. I do want to switch out the rangefinder for a CAC one because this one is way too big, but this has to be the best Phase 1 Rex out there. Next we got Fives using a CAC Arc helmet. This figure is just perfection. Everything from the printing to the accessories just make this one of the best customs I've ever seen. Echo might just top it out for me though. I love the blue on his pauldron and Rex's handprint is so iconic. I'm not sure where the backpacks are from, but they look great on these guys. Amazing figures all around. Last up we have Charger or the 501st Grunt. 
The whole figure is AV, and although the helmet is a little big, I still prefer the shape over CACs. They went for a dark blue on this guy, and I'm not quite sure how I feel about it. I think somewhere closer to sand blue would be most accurate. But that's all for the figure so far. The rest will just be droids and don't need any introductions. Alright, this is the smaller of two orders I placed for the hallway I made in the last video. This one mainly had a few different sizes of bricks and some odds and ends, like the trans purple cheese slopes I needed for the electro mines. This is the big one, and it has a bunch of long dark gray plates, inverted slopes, light gray slopes, 1x2 plates, jumpers, 1x4 tiles, snot pieces, cheese slopes, hinges, clips, more cheese slopes, curved slopes, 2x2 two two plates, ingots, and some pieces for the 2002 Geonosian Starfighter that I'm trying to put back together. There's lots of stuff to work with here, so I'm going to set up a time lapse and get going on the hallway. I started with the light designs on the walls, and then moved on to switching out some black plates for dark gray ones. Then I switched all the slopes in the wall and started on the floor. I did the side wall first, and then swapped out the 1x3 slopes on the edges, and then in the diamond shaped floor pattern. Before I put everything back together, I wanted to make sure that the lightsaber wires were in place so I didn't have to come back to this area later on. This was more annoying than anything, trying to get the figures to stand up without knocking each other over was a real pain, but I needed to see where the figures would go to know where I needed to have the lightsabers. Eventually I got them all set up and was able to reconnect the ceiling. Here we can finally see the hallway in its mainly completed state. I still need to build the doorways on either end, but all of the parts are in the right colors and the lightsabers are good to go. I'm really happy with how this came out. I didn't add in the droids as I was just getting an idea for the figure placement, but I can't wait to see what it will look like with the battle scene happening on both sides. I love how the light shines through the wall design and the atmospheric lighting the lightsabers have is so cool. I'm definitely satisfied with how this hallway came out, but with that said, let's wrap up the video. Alright, that is going to wrap up episode 8 for the Citadel building series. Got a lot done this week between the shuttle and obviously getting in the minifigures that we're going to be using in the mock, as well as finally getting the parts to be able to finish up that hallway design. So I'm very excited for all the progress that we made this week, and hopefully next video we'll be able to keep on going with the interior, so hopefully I'll be able to make more progress in that direction for the next video. If you guys made it this far, consider leaving a like on the video and subscribing if you're interested in following the Citadel progress all the way to the end. That's all for me for this video, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.